Hello, my name is Professor Vanilia Randall. I'm a professor emeritus at the University of Dayton School of Law. I uh, have been involved in racial justice issues for almost 50 years, and I taught race and racism in American law for almost 30 years. I have also taught American healthcare law, torts, criminal law, remedies, and professional responsibilities. So I have a broad range of experience. That said, my expertise in any, this area is more about how the system works uh, than the specific details. So what I want to do today is just present an overview and some issues for uh, racial justice that we should be concerned about. So what is political gerrymandering and, what, and what's, what does racial justice have to do with it? That's what we're going to talk about. And so, I don't believe in presenting something without some potential solutions. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, and we'll talk about the most recent case a little bit. So what do you think is the best path to um, political victory? Is it running good candidates? Uh, is it crafting a strong campaign uh, message? Uh, is it having a good, good economy? Clearly all of those matter, but what can matter most in, society, in our society is how the district maps are drawn. Uh, and so uh, politicians, especially in a party politics scenario will draw district maps uh, to help themselves, either by packing the votes or splitting the votes. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. The gerrymandering is problematic because it makes, at a minimum, makes voters feel like their votes don't count, that it's not voters who elect politicians, it's politicians who decide who their voters will be. And that's, that's a, a significantly different system. So what I'm going to do is uh, go through this uh, ger political gerrymandering, talk about it, and I'm gonna share my slides right now so that we can um, get. So right now, what you should be seeing is uh, this my screen showing uh, the political gerrymandering, you. Hi. Hi, I'm glad you all got up early to do this. <laughs> can you see the screen okay? Yes, I can. Okay, so I'm gonna proceed on with the presentation and hopefully my phone will be okay. So okay. start with what is gerrymandering? Uh, I put up this map of Tennessee because it really is a good map to show how politicians draw the um, districts in, in a given state. This is particularly Tennessee. In the United States, every state elects a certain number of people to the House of, uh, to, excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, excuse me, every state elects a certain number of people to the House of Representatives. And that number is based on the census count, which is why there's this big argument over the citizenship questions. Uh, and I'll do a presentation on that. But essentially, an accurate census account is important to drawing the districts. Uh, so because of the count, for instance, ten, uh, North Carolina uh, can have, Tennessee can have 13 districts drawn. So, but gerrymandering can affect any body where there's districts. So like if you have districts in your city, your city can, the politicians can draw, the politicians can draw districts uh, that uh, affect their, uh, any, any, the, obviously the, the House, the U.S. Senate, the House, the Senate isn't affected because the Senate has 
two votes per state, no matter how many people are in the state. But the House has, uh, the House is divided up by the number of people. And, and so uh, the, the way we do it now is we have supposedly have uh, districts of equal number of people. So that every vote counts. One, that's why the districts have to be uh, is of similar size. The fact is, is gerrymandering that is drawing a map to meet some objective other than one vote, uh, other than competition, has been around from the very beginning. The founders discussed the problem, uh, and it existed back then and it has just gotten worse over years. And both parties tend to redistrict when they're in power to favor themselves. So this is not a Republican or a Democrat uh, issue. The fact is, is the Republicans, by winning so much seat in, in, seats in the 2-10 election, got to redraw districts in many states because they had taken over the state legislature, but uh, Democrats do it in their states. Uh, and so it's important to know that while this may present a unique, uh, the problems that the Republicans are presenting now may be seen kind of uniquely Republican, it really isn't. So a partisan uh, gerrymandering political is when the map is drawn uh, intentionally to benefit a particular party. Uh, you, you'll notice when you look at this map that it's not a clean map. Uh, and that's no accident. Uh, and the, the, uh, the map was drawn by um, North Carolina Republicans. And the result is that, and it was effective. The result is that even though the Democrats won the same amount of votes, it was almost 50-50, the Republicans ended up with a 10 to uh, 3 majority in uh, the state house instead of 50-50. Um, racial, uh, we'll talk more about racial gerrymandering and how uh, uh, is can mean the dilution of votes power of certain uh, of certain groups. So uh, this is just to re-emphasize how it works. If you look at number twelve on the map, which is that long purple uh, district over to the left, and number four, which is also a long uh, 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 district, you see. The lengths that uh, the Republicans went to to draw di a district that would work for them. Um, so there's basically four ways you, well, it's probably more than four, but we categorize them into four when you do partisan. You can have, so we, we start with the premise that districts have to be drawn. So you don't get to say, at least not at this stage, you don't get to say, okay, we're not, we're going to have 13 uh, representatives and everybody in the state gets 13 votes and they can vote for anybody they want. Every, everybody is uh, uh, run statewide and, and we go from there. No, we, we don't do that. We could do that, but we don't. So you could draw the districts to be competitive. That is, uh, you could draw them, let's say red and blue represents almost the same number of votes in the state, 50-50, but they're distributed in a way where it's, if you just draw straight lines, it's just gonna be competitive. You are, you're gonna have five, uh, you're gonna have, you know, five, uh, blue votes to five red votes. There, there's no advantage. You can draw what is called sweetheart districts, which are districts drawn to protect an incumbent. So they're not so much concerned about 
uh, 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 taking up uh, drawing to get more or less districts, they're concerned about making sure that a particular incumbent is, stays in power. You can have what is called packing, where you put all of one kind of voter as much as you can in one district so that disperse their power over the other. So if you start off with four districts and you put all the red, as many of the red voters as you can into one district, it means that the other four districts are gonna be dominated by blue voters. And even while in theory, uh, the the red there are as many red voters in the state as blue voters because they're distributed in this way they don't have they end up with only one district which is uh, one representative compared to uh, the other four of the blue cracking is when you uh, take the voters of a certain group and spread them out uh, in a way that groups them, but in different districts, so that you put the red voters in groups as much as possible, but not all in one district. You split the vote, you crack them. Uh, and cracking the votes can often give uh, an advantage that another method won't, okay? Now, in the past, they had to do this all by just hand and, and, and thinking about it, but now they can run commu uh, computer models which will end up telling them how to draw the most uh, aligned uh, vote so that it gets uh comes out giving the results they want so that's what the case uh ruco versus common cause was about if you look at that lone green uh map uh district in the left hand corner in north carolina this uh, district was sued over uh it, it particularly because it was drawn just for the purpose of giving political advantage. Uh, and uh, the recent decision, the June 27th, 2019 decision, a five to four majority opinion said, yeah, this looks like unpermissible uh, partisan gerrymandering. It's distasteful, it's unjust, it's outrageous but the majority said it's a political question. Now, this idea of things being a political question is the idea that the courts shouldn't uh, put themselves into the me middle of what uh, something that the state legislatures or the Congress or the voters should do. If the if the those people don't do it, then the court shouldn't do it, and that was a reason for a long time that the courts refused to do anything about segregation. They said state rights meant it was a political decision, and while we may think uh, segregation is horrible and horrible and everything, we're not going to tell states what to do. Congress said, I mean, not Congress. The Roberts Court, the majority basically said, hey, we don't have the ability to do anything about this. This is something that is horrible and awful and should be corrected, but we are not the ones that should correct. I think it's important to look at K uh, Kagan's dissent, I'm sorry, oh, dissent, because I think that it provides a view of political uh, the, uh, counters what the majority said. They said the only way to understand the majority's opinion is to say, well, in the face of grievous harm to democratic governance and fragment infringements on individual rights, in the face of escalating partisan manipulation, whose compatibility with this nation's value and law no one defends, the def the majority declines to provide any remedy. Aiken says for the first time, I'm not sure that's true, in this nation's history, 
the majority declares that it can do nothing about an acknowledged constitutional violation. So the majority is saying, yeah, we, this violates the Constitution because it disrupts the one vote, one person view of the Constitution as embedded in uh, the, um, uh, the articles. But they're like, we can't do anything about it because uh, we don't know of a workable legal standard. So in order for law to work, there has to be a standard that people can apply. Now, the problem, the reality is, and this is what Kagan points out, is, is that that's what courts are supposed to do. Courts set the standards all the time. And then over time, they define what those standards mean. And, and Kay pointed out that, in fact, the lower courts had, in fact, proposed a workable standard. That workable standard, we like to, in the law, boil things down to elements that have to be proven or disproven, and then we define the element. So the proposed standard for to judge whether partisan gerrymandering is impermissible would include intent, effect, and causation. Three things that are common to the law now. So to a large extent, if they can look at other areas of the law to articulate what those standards mean. But uh, Kagan went further and said, so when we talk about intent, we're saying, was the state official's predominant purpose, not only purpose, predominant purpose in drawing the lines the way they drew them to entrench their power party in power? Then you have to ask, did the lines drawn in fact have that an intended fact? So you can't sue over, yeah, they, they, their purpose was to get power, but in fact, that didn't happen. So you have to have the effect that, in fact, it gave them more power. And then they, she said there needs to be causation element. That is, you have, there, the state gets to say, wait a minute, yeah, uh, we drew the lines this way, and yeah, the lines' predominant purpose might have been to entrench party power, uh, and it had that effect, but we have a legitimate nonpartisan justification for drawing the map, okay? Now, you may think, well, that does away with the intent. Well, sort of, if they can prove it. But the, what we have found in the past is you can't have pretext. So when you come up with a purpose that is really obviously just pretext, that is not legitimate. Uh, and generally speaking, Purposes that are articulated after the fact are considered pretext. So, um, so that was that decision. And right now, uh, partisan gerrymandering is legal in the in the United States until states do something. Okay. So how does that interact with racial ger gerrymandering? So the 15th Amendment, sections one and two, says that protects the right of vote and that nothing should, uh, uh, that the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or bridged. And the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was uh, passed to uh, protect that largely because uh, the 15th Amendment was uh, states were uh, denying the right to vote based on race uh, and they were diluting the vote. Uh, the, and so racial gerrymandering is still an Im a legally impermissible uh, reason, uh, thing, uh, thing that can be done. The legal standard in terms of whether or not it uh, uh, 
uh, it is something that the courts will find uh, impermissible is compactness. So they look at, have you put all the minorities into one group or, or, or compatting them? Or they look at irregularity. That is um, whether or not the district is so odd that you, racial, uh, it has to have a racial motivation behind it. Now, the problem with uh, trying to do something about racial gerrymandering is that even though it's still illegal, in 2013, the Supreme Court uh, Pat, uh, said made to Section 5, which was the monitoring section of the Voting Rights Act, uh, basically did, did away with that by saying that those states that there would not be automatically monitoring of people uh, based on sex, I mean, states based on Section 5. So now there's, while it's illegal, there's no real monitoring. And the only, um, the only thing that can be done is to uh, uh, sue. So what is the consequences of, one of the things that happened was to uh, to, when you put minorities uh, into uh, compact districts in order to uh, give them more power. Uh, so let's say you have five districts that you, uh, in which you, uh, you put a third, want to divide up into five districts. Uh, the consequence of majority majority districts is you might in fact be diluting the influence so while you pack the what they would do is pack a lot of minorities into one district on the idea that at least they get to elect uh, a, uh, a, a a representative that represents their views in those districts but the problem becomes is if you look to the 50% minority district, what you see is, is that out of the five districts, they only have influence or power in two of the districts. And that's the problem. Now, a 30% more minority packing will give them more influence because they will be if to the left. You will have um, two uh, two districts where they can elect someone, only one district where they can't elect anyone, and they will have two districts where they have some influence. So packing may have the, a uh, uh, significant packing has the unintended consequence of diluting the vote of minorities, of black. Here's the problem. Partisan gerrymandering in today inflicts racial harm. That so partisan gerrymandering privileges political insiders. It disenfranchises voter outsiders. So I'm not a Democrat or Republican. I'm a socialist. Partisan gerrymandering means I can never have my views represented because I, I can never get enough votes to win a representative. But, but the biggest problem for racial minorities is that political parties are, law, are organized along racial lines. And so uh, when you say partisan gerrymandering uh, uh, is permissible, which it is now because the Supreme Court did not find it unconstitutional, then uh, they will say, hey, we didn't argue, we drew lines to give ourselves political power. We put all the Republicans together. We didn't draw lines to give ourselves racial power. We put all the whites together. But the problem is those two are now linked for the most part. Uh, and 
I think that the courts are going to say when you go to racial gerrymandering, the courts are going to say they had, you know, this uh, alternative view. Yeah, the political is okay, racial is no. We can see that they just drew for Republicans, and if that happened to be all whites, then hey, that is the way the the, the cookie crumbles. The other problem with racial gen gerrymandering is, is uh, that could be used is that in and of itself, it is a badge of slavery. Uh, not being able to vote was linked to slavery and, and uh, it subjugates a protected class. I, I'm, I'm have no hope that it'll be done in this court, but I think eventually a court will have to flip the script. That is, say, yeah, you can do partisan gerrymandering, but if it has a race effect, that takes priority, and you don't get to draw districts that have a racially disenfranchised, even if the re, uh, a predominant purpose of your drawing the maps was a partisan. Uh, because racial gerrymandering is a badge of slavery, and so and that is, the courts have always have always said that getting rid of the badges of slavery is uh, is one of the things that is that is high priority for the courts to do. And I've already talked about this uh, now. Both. Democrats and Republicans use gerrymandering to give themselves some racial advantage. Republicans tend to pack racial minority voters in order to concentrate racial minorities in one district, while Democrats tend to crack racial minority votes to spread them out over multiple districts. So that because they know that uh, uh, minority black voters are a, are a consistent uh, voting block, and that if they spread them over several districts, that they'll be more likely to take those uh, those districts back because they get a a, a voting block in those two about it. Well. One thing uh, people talk about, the problem right now is that uh, uh, the reforms are drawn by, mostly by uh, politicians in power, the districts. And so, of course, the incentive is to draw to protect yourself. One of the problem, one of the recommend, recommendations is to have a bipartisan commission draw it. The problem with that is that that commission is still going to be influenced by a duopoly giving power to both Democrats and Republicans, but excluding other parties. Maybe a better alternative, and this is some, is multi-member districts. So instead of having one person for one district, you have 13 uh, uh, persons for the state of North Carolina, and voters get to vote on 13 people. Uh, you get, uh, and if you have proportional representation, it means that, for instance, if the Social Democrats can get 20% of the vote, they'll get one representative in Congress. It's no longer, proportional representation means that it's no longer a winner takes all. It's you get the number, you, you get to get the number of representatives based on the number of votes that, you, that uh, were cast. And uh, if you have ranking votes, that's, you know, it's not necessary, but ranking votes also allows people to go with their first, second, and third choices, which means that people are more likely to vote their true feelings on the first vote, and that 
pew person can get voted in because people have voted for them than thinking, oh, well, yes, I'm a socialist Democrat, a democratic socialist, but they're never going to get elected. So I guess I will vote for a Democrat or Republican. No, I'll vote for a socialist Democrat because on my first vote and rank the Democrat second so if my socialist Democrat doesn't get 20% of the vote, then my vote would then go to my second vote. So that's the other, I didn't put it on the slide, but ranking is another reform that could be done. I This is intended just to be the overview to the extent that you want to know a lot more. And I have to tell you, you should want to know a lot more, a lot more than what I can tell you here. I put it links in uh, the, the uh, gerrymandering or uh, links to good things on the on the internet. My website now has a gerrymandering page, which uh, all of those the, the two cases and those articles on race and gerrymandering will come up. So you can just go to that page. Open up for comments and discussion. Uh, I think you can unmute yourself and you can just ask a question. Um, the video will be put up on YouTube. The slides are going to be available on Patreon. Professor Randall, we know, this is Ivanka. Yes. So I, we know that, you know, Ohio has a, um, a problem too, also with how we have gerrymandered our district. Um, you know, like our congressional district where Marshall Hurst has now been cut into the Akron area. And I know that a few years ago, the way they gerrymandered the district is they gerrymandered it enough in order for Dennis Kucinich to lose his seat. Yeah. Uh, and that they've also talked about this whole bipartisan commission that I really haven't seen do anything because even with the bipartisan commission, it has to go to a larger body for them. So, so what are your thoughts on that? Because it's still going to a Republican-controlled House. Yeah, and they're never going to vote for anything that is just 50-50. But the pro that's the problem with the bipartisan commission. And the other problem with the bipartisan commission and just dividing it up, Republican and Democrats, is it disenfranchised people who don't want to be Republicans or Democrats. And then in a system where you're supposed to have one vote, my vote shouldn't be disenfranchised because I don't want to re vote Republican or Democrat. A better way is a multi-district, and it doesn't have to be whole state. They can draw districts that, if it is the research, and you'd have to look at the research, the research tends to show as long as the districts have at least five members in it, that you will, that gerrymandering effect won't work because it'll be proportional. Uh, the good thing about Ohio is you all can get changed by putting stuff on the ballot and you can make constitutional changes by ballot. Uh, and so you're not dependent upon uh, uh, the state doing the right thing. Unfortunately, many states don't, you don't have the power to put things on the ballot. And so whoever's in power, whether it's Democrat or Republican, is going to protect that power. So what, so what, so what would happen is you put something, if you went to the ballot, but then the legislator decided that they wanted to also do some legislation um, on that same particular issue. Well, supposedly, and we have this problem in Florida, and this is why it's important to, to uh, think carefully about how, peop how people who don't want to do it will make changes in a constitutional amendment. Florida has the ability to do a constitutional amendment. So in theory, if you pass something that is in the Constitution, the legislature can't come behind and not do it or do it differently than the Constitution provide. That would, uh, the, the Supreme Court of the United States doesn't generally get involved in state, lower state actions, but ignoring your own Constitution is one of the things they'll get involved in. 
So in theory, if you if you make a ballot that gets elected and gets put and is in the Constitution, then whoever the legislatures are have to abide by it. Now, that said, I can tell you what Florida Pat, Florida was one of the uh, uh, states that had uh, felony disenfranchisement. Lots of pe people who were uh, uh, couldn't vote because of felony disenfranchisement and a really onerous method of getting your uh, vote back. And so the people in Florida went and passed a constitutional amendment and uh, which said that once, uh, basically, once a person finished their uh, requirements uh, under the law, so whatever sentence they had, once they finished that sentence, uh, they would get their vote back, okay? The, the legislature who didn't don't want to give the vote back came and passed the law that said part of the sentence for every person is paying back their fines and paying restitution. So until you pay off your fines and pay off your restitution, you haven't completed your sentence which essentially then di continues to disenfranchise a large group of people. So if you're wanting to do a constitutional amendment, you have to really have some good thinkers think about how will the people in the legislature uh, interpret this to their advantage to pass laws around it. And then uh, you, one thing you could do is that uh, you could put in a constitutional amendment that the legislature can't pass any law that modifies the enactment without putting it up for vote. You know, so it's kind of putting a, a, a Pope vote by the citizens. But yeah, that, that, you, that's, that's the problem. Our comments. Greetings, uh, Mama. Ma this Greetings. is uh, Brother Steve Muhammad out of Dayton. Um, oh, Steve, I'm so glad that I haven't talked to you forever. <laughs> it's been a while here. I'll remove this thing. Um, <laughs> I guess, you know, this um, this subject, this topic, gerrymandering is so, it's, 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 it's so in-depth and, and, and confusing, really. Um, it's just, um, it, it's hard to even know where to begin. Um, what what do you think about um, the it being so confusing to the average um, to the average citizen? Do you think that 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 right there alone is is, is a serious problem? Sure, you're absolutely right about that. And in fact, that the, the what has happened, our life has gotten so confusing that now what people just rely on some uh, community sources, I mean, general sources for information, and that source is often politically motivated and inaccurate or, or, or uh, manipulated. Uh, yes, I think a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding, but the problem is it empowers people who want to be in power. Yeah, I mean, so there's a large part of the citizenry, whether it's Democrat, if you're in a Democratic state, Democratic voters want it. Right. <laughs> you, you, nobody, you know, the only, you know, Democratic voters, what they want is not to be disenfranchised in a Republican state. And what Republicans want is not to be disenfranchised in a Democratic state. But if they control the state, they want to maintain control. And, and the problem is both getting voters to understand why that is problematic for us as Black people. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it, even when you say, well, the Democrats crack our votes, but that crack, they don't crack the votes in our interest. They crack the votes in their interest. And that we may have, we may decide we want districts drawn somewhat different if it was up to us. 
-hmm. You know, um, so yeah, I, it is, and it's a complicated, and there's so much going, I mean, obviously the vote, dilution of the voting rights uh, uh, is a big issue. So gerrymandering can seem, is not seen, is very technical and, and, and it's hard for people to understand. And on some level, everybody wants it. They just don't want to be the people who are disadvantaged by it. Right, right. Now, do you think that the gerrymandering is uh, on a national level, you have the um, vote tampering or rigging uh, from what they would say foreign, um, foreign interests, uh, but locally it, lo it looks as though uh, this gerrymandering is just as, as, as harmful uh, to the uh, uh, voting process as, as vote rigging. rigging. I think it's probably, it is more. Yeah. It's, it, <laughs> it's more because the whole, you know, trolling and uh, bots and all of that is not a certain way of getting votes. Drawing district lines is. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's kind of like, if, if I could only do one thing, it would not be deal with the bots are the trolling, it would be deal with the gerrymandering and, and and how that impacts us. Right. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Nice to see you. You too. I wish I was still in uh, uh, Dayton and, well, not really, plus I oh, liked right. it warm weather, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> I do miss you all. Yeah, we miss you too, for sure. But I'm glad that you put on these uh, 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 webcasts because this is really important. I'm, I am going to try to do them fairly frequently and, and if there's anything people want me to do it on, they should let me know because uh, 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 I'm happy to, to, to put together something like this where we talk 15, 20 minutes and then just where I give a little lecture, background information and then we talk about it. All right. I'll check out that page too and, and, tr and read and get some more information. And we can do a follow-up one. Right. Okay. The other thing to look at is the dis local district thing. We tend to forget that, but we should lo be looking at how the districts, if your city has districts, you should be looking at it. All right. Now, how, how, how often can you change or can you, you know, uh, as far as gerrymandering, how often can, can those lines be changed? Well, they're changed. They have to be done in conjunction with the census. And the census is done, every, the national, every 10 years. Okay. So the, about, the lines are changed about every 10 years, unless you can go to court and win a case to say that what was done is, is uh, inappropriate and irregular. Good morning, Professor Randall. Can Good you morning. hear me? Yes, Hi. who's this? This is Joelle Jones from Dayton, Ohio. Okay, I, I'm looking at the top of your head. Oh, can you see me? I didn't want nobody to see me. My hair is not done. Just <laughs> well, all we're looking at is the top of your head. You might want to cut the video okay. off. Okay. Okay, uh, question for you, just for clarification. The courts, the uh, case that went to the Supreme Court relative to gerrymandering. Yes. Was it argue under a violation of civil rights? No. Uh, it wasn't, so let me ask you this. Is That's that a possibility that, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, I'm sorry. So, so is there a possibility that that case uh, can be reintroduced to the lower courts to go eventually to the Supreme Courts as a violation of civil rights and equal protection under the law for minorities. Is that another way to view that or is that not possible? No, that's exactly possible, especially if they go, uh, uh, well, not this particular case, but another okay. case, uh, 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 because, you know, the rule basically is, is, is that un unless the once a case has been litigated, it's litigated. 
Okay. The court, the court can kick it back down and say, okay, we want you to do X. And then okay. when and 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 then when they do X, it comes back up through the courts again. But that's not what happened in this case, in the common cause case. What happened in this case is they just said, hey, there's nothing we can do about it. Wow. But they can bring a, another case. I mean, they and uh, maybe even the, it probably wasn't argued on racial lines because there wasn't uh, there wasn't enough of a problem for them to be able to point it out. But they, if they can, yeah, they can bring a different case and use uh, equal protection and uh, the Fifteenth Amendment and the voting writing rights. Excuse me, the Voting Rights Act. So that could look very differently in Ohio, whereby it could be argued along racial lines. Oh, oh! If you're bringing a totally different case, you can bring a totally different case now. Okay. Okay. The, the, I thought you were talking about bringing the same case back up. Yes, ma'am. I was, but just asking. Okay. Just, no, that's uh, fine. I, I was just really disappointed, but not surprised by the court's decision, and just wondering where where do we go uh, from this point? You know, well, the over the, go ahead. To, if there's racial implication, you sue based on racial implication. But it's clear that the courts have said this is a state and Congress problem. State and Congress have to solve it. So that means that oh, people in Ohio who have a uh, uh, districting that's partisan, uh, but not necessarily racial, will need to do something on a political level to address it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for holding this webcast. I look forward to the links and uh, I'm sure I'll get in touch with you regarding more questions going forward. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Dr. Randall, this is Ivanka. Yes. Do we also need to make sure, I think, one of the things you talk, we talked about earlier, you talked about earlier was you know, the public doesn't quite understand. But I yes. think, you know, for, for me, because I work with the African American community, who I think a lot of things really don't understand how gerrymandering not only um, impacts their representation, but it impacts their education, employment, housing, and, and all those budgets, um, and how dollars are dispersed into those communities. And, and I, 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 think, I think that they don't understand the whole overarching like one wrong move over here impacts all of this stuff um, over there so um so, can you so, talk a little bit about that? yeah just just a match so you're in a state that uh where republicans get 50 percent of the vote but they get uh 10 of the 13 seats it means that you now have Republican policies, even though the state itself is only 50% Republican. Okay, and so you're gonna have Republican policies in housing, Republican policies in, in uh, uh, education, Republic, every, everything that comes up to a vote in your, your uh, state Congress is going to be Republican when in fact it, it should be more iffy, iffy, 50-50. That is sometimes because you, if it was 50-50 vote, then sometimes it would be Republican and sometimes it would be Democrat because neither one of them has enough vote to control the House, to control the, con uh, the, the, the legislature. When you have gerrymandering, you get you redesign the whole state to ignore voters' rights and turn it over to a particular party. And that at a minimum is gonna last for 10 years. At a minimum, possibly more. Wow. Especially in this day and age where 
they have sophisticated ways of doing. So, right, the problem coming up is in 2010, the, the, how we got into the situation, in 2010, Republicans took over a lot of state houses, and 2010 is when they redrew the districts. Now we're we're the redistricts are going to be drawn after the census 2020, and for places where Republicans are still in control, they're still going unless you do something, they're still going to draw districts that maintain their power. And this is the problem. The problem that Kayan was pointing out is you say this is a political decision, but Voters really don't have a way of fixing this. And so wow. we, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We should uh we should step in at least we if this is a constitutional violation, which it is, then we should step in. We don't want to be judging every redistricting. She agreed with that. But we should step in on the, there should we should put forth a standard and step in step in in the most egregious uh, uh, re redistricting areas. And if they had done that, I think that what would have happened for the 2020 uh, districting is they would be, they would still be trying to maintain power, but they would not go too far for fear that they would get the uh, the Supreme Court involved. Supreme Court has basically said, we're not getting involved. They didn't say you did the wrong thing and this is illegal, but we can't judge your facts. They could have said that. They didn't say, we believe this is legal, but not in this particular instance. They didn't say that. They said, yeah, yeah, this is unconstitutional, but there's nothing we can do about it. Wow. So, Professor Randall, then what becomes the recourse then? Is that so? Then, if the Supreme can't do any, Supreme Court can't do anything about it, they say they have no jurisdiction over this particular issue, and it belongs to the states. Then, does that mean that? pockets of grassroots organizations have to educate, expose, and I mean, how do we get... I think, you have, to, I think you have to do for this issue what people did for the marijuana issue. Oh, so make it a ballot issue? Yeah. I think you have to make it a ballot issue because you're never going to get people to give up power. They don't have to. So we had something regarding, I have to, I'm not sure exactly what it was that Ohio was doing here regarding um, redistricting. I have to look at what exactly what the law was, but nothing came above. I'm not sure if, if any of the other viewers know, but I want to do some more research on that. Um, would it be possible to contact you later and maybe as uh, Neighborhood of Politics, which organization I represent, I was able to get you here to do a forum on this particular issue. Well, um, I'd be happy to come and do it, but I am not the most expert on it. A few of the, the people that articles I list are all people, African-American or people of color who are who have a deep understanding of, of this issue in race. Okay. Now, I'll be, I feel competent enough to to provide some basic education, like I'm okay. doing now. Okay. Uh, and I'll be happy to do a webinar. I, I'm in my 70s now, my mid-70s, and I don't like to travel too much. So, okay. yeah, but I'll be happy to do something as basic as what I've done now. But and I know some of the people that articles I list. And if you all want to do something, uh, I would be happy to uh, put you in touch with someone who is much more knowledgeable than I am. 
Uh, I think here's my solution. I don't. I don't think districts. Are, I don't think a commission is the solution. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I uh, went out. I didn't mean. By ballot, you should move to multi-member districts with proportional representation. Is that a constitutional? Is that a a, a constitution? I'm not a constitution. Amendment to state law to the Ohio Constitution is that? Yeah, that's what, what you're happens then. That's what you're going to have to do. No matter what you decide to do, you're going to have to do it as an amendment to the Constitution. Because if you don't do it as an amendment to the Constitution, you will always be battling up to against whoever's in power. Okay. They don't want to do it, and so they don't do it. They come up with reasons. No, 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 no. Or they, they select stuff that they know is going to be ineffective, like a bipartisan, bipartisan committee. The problem I have is is that, and I said this earlier, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. A bipartisan commission right. just maintains that duopoly, and people like myself who don't vote Democrat and Republican, our votes are still disenfranchised. Absolutely. You know, but if you had a multi-member district with proportional representation. Then it's possible that um, someone like me and others like me could get at least one representative out of five who was a democratic socialist. That's what oh, most of them, but, and that's why neither the Democrats or Republicans are going to want it, because it actually go uh, empowers third parties. It's definitely not what they want, especially here in the state of Ohio. Yeah. But okay. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. So we've been almost an hour, <laughs> yeah, exactly an hour almost. Uh, I'm gonna stop here. I'm going to uh, set this up to be put up on the internet. Like I said, photography uh, is there. Uh, the, the slides will be up on, uh, the video will be on YouTube and available to anyone. If you want my slides, they uh, a PDF file will be up on Patreon, okay, if you want to get a copy of my slides. If you have something that you would like me to do, if you have a topic that you'd like to see me covered, email me. Uh, and my email is on the slide, and I'll be happy to do so. And thank you all so much for turning out and having this good discussion. I'm glad that it hit, hit a need.